This is the OTB Network. Hello and welcome to a very busy edition of Horses and Courses. I'm Jean Wood. We've just completed the holiday weekend and it's been a big, big weekend. A lot of stakes racing action. The turf out of California. We've had some great racing here in New York, but we're going to begin in Kentucky as we are finishing up at Churchill Downs. We're going to go back to last Thursday's running of the Fall City. This was anticipated to be a uh, possible final career start for Azari. They have opted out of this race. Nonetheless, a strong field. Let's head to Churchill Downs and Thursday's running of the Fall City. Off and running in the Fall City handicap. Good clean start early. Susan's Angel breaking on top. Indy Groove up the inside. Mayo on the side put up into the race early. Red Cells on the far outside. Then Flower Forest. Hallery Lee settling back second last. Just four off the pace passing the stands. Misfortunate trails. Rounding the first turn. Indy Groove and Brees Blanc will set the pace. Three parts of a length in front of Pat Day and Susan's Angel. Reserved off her flank. Second Mayo on the side put up into third early. Misfortunate cuts the corner in fourth. Hallery Lee racing in fifth. Just four lengths off the pace now. Then Flower Forest and two and a half back to Red Cell at the back of the pack. The opening quarter 24 and one fifth seconds. Indy Groove now opens up by a length and a quarter. Susan's Angel right there second. Misfortunate inching up at the rail in third. Mayo on the sides in fourth. Hallery Lee splitting horses and she's up into the fourth spot early now. Then it's Red Cell and Flower Forest at the back of the pack is five lengths off the pace with four and a half furlongs to run. Opening half time was 48 and three fifth seconds. Moving past the half mile pole. Indy Groove ahead Head, now pressed harder by Susan's Angel in second and Hallery Lee right there in perfect striking position racing a clear cut third misfortunate back into fourth Mayo on the side re rallies from fifth now Flower Forest picks it up in five back to Red Cell six furlongs in one thirteen and one around the turn to the top of the lane they come Susan's Angel pokes her nose in front Andy Groove's under pressure here comes Hallery Lee and she's revving hard to the outside Hallery Lee up to poke her nose in front Susan's Angel kicking back Back gaily to back to misfortunate. Mayo on the sides on the far side down to the fight. Hallery Lee edging away. Susan's Angel game, but can't go with her. Three back to Indy Groove and Miss Fortunate. Another nice win for Hallery Lee. Three in a row. Hallery Lee and Eddie Martin going away to win the Fall City by two and a half over Susan's Angel. Miss Fortunate ran third. Hallery Lee continuing on her role. She has been very, very good of late here, drawing clear by two and three quarters over Susan's Angel. Long shot, Miss Fortunate, sat a uh, stalking trip after having a little bit of traffic trouble in the early going at 20 to 1, finishing third. The winner, Hallery Lee, a chestnut four year old daughter of Hallery Hunter from Graceful Lee by Clever Trick, was bred in Kentucky by Al Prophet and Larry Demerit, owned by Jerry Crawford, Matt Gannon, and Charlie Grask, trained by Dale Romans and ridden to victory by Eddie Martin Jr. Hallery Lee covers the mile and an eighth in the Fall City in 151 and 4. Next up, the Clark Handicap down at Churchill Downs on Friday. This is an historic race, and in recent years has really become a very important fixture on the Churchill Downs season. It is a grade two, half a million dollar, nine furlong for the older horses. Let's head down to Churchill and the Clark. Off and running in the Clark Handicap. Seek Gold came right over into St. Liam at the start. It's Euro Silver. Breaking on top and joined by Suave up the inside, flashing speed. Lundy's liability, flashing speed. St. Liam up the inside takes the second spot now. Perfect drift, a close up fourth early, rounding the first turn. St. Liam gets that rail spot, but Lundy's liability taking the lead now. Three parts of a length in front of St. Liam in some tight quarters and taking a hold of there. A half a length farther back to Perfect Drift, who moves three wide third. Suave right there in the thick of things early in fourth. Pies Prospect moves to the outside fifth. Euro Silver is a close up sixth followed by Sir Cherokee who rides the rail. Colonial Colony next by four and Seek Gold is at the back of the pack. It doesn't off the pace up the backside. A quarter moderate 24 seconds flat. Lundy's liability. David Flores doling out his speed. A length and a half in front. St. Liam steered off the outside rail now. Comes the challenge. Sir Cherokee up the inside third. Perfect drift and striking range in fourth. Swaz racing in fifth by a length and a half. The Colonial Colony and up close six now. And behind that comes Euro Silver. A length and a half back to Pi 
Prize Prospect in five. Back to Seek Gold at the back, half in 48 seconds flat. Around the far turn they go. Lundy's liability and neck. St. Liam turning up, increasing pressure second. Perfect drift shaken up by DeSormo coming a game third. Suave in striking range, racing in four. Sir Cherokee up the inside, put to a full out drive. As they turn for home, St. Liam taking the lead now. Lundy's liability, here comes perfect drift down the center of the racetrack. Down to the final furlong, St. Liam shaken up hard by Prado and responding to the challenge of perfect drift on the outside. St. Liam, perfect drift. Here comes Seek Gold charging hard from the back of the pack. St. Liam's got the lead. Seek Gold flying up the inside. St. Liam clears. St. Liam wins the Clark by a length. Seek Gold was second. Perfect drift finished up third and suave in the Clark handicap in 150 and four. St. Liam getting the victory here, coming off of that exciting second place finish to subsequent Breeders' Cup Classic winner, Ghost Zapper. A couple of months back in the Woodward, they gave him some time off. They took a pass on the big race in, uh, in Breeders' Cup competition and came back with a fresh horse, drawing clear by a length and a half, vindicating the fact that he has been, uh, been had a strong following all this season despite a very light racing season. Seek Gold, who caused some trouble at the starting gate uh, before the race and at the, uh, at the break, was well behind the field at the top of the stretch and ended up rallying into second at 42 to 1. Perfect Drift, who has had a little bit of a tendency to run second all this season breaks that streak with a third place finish here. The winner, St. Liam, is a four-year-old bay cult, a son of St. Bellotto from Quiet Dance by Quiet American, bred in Kentucky by Edward P. Evans. He's owned by Mr. and Mrs. William Warren, Jr., trained by Richard Dutrow, Jr., and ridden to victory by Edgar Prado. St. Liam covers the mile in an eighth at Churchill in 150 and four. Pair of stakes races to uh, complete the Churchill Downs meeting on Saturday. We're going to begin with the two-year-old fillies in the Grade Two Goldenrod. They're going to be going a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head down to Kentucky in the running of the Goldenrod. Off and running in the Goldenrod. Quiet optimism springing out on top, joined by Summerlee and Coda. Then the two favorites, runway model in the gold. And a gap of three back to Mill Locks, who settles down at the back of the pack as they round the opening turn. Summerlee takes the lead, crossing over now in front of Quiet Optimism, a length and a quarter in front. Quiet Optimism, second in the gold, rushing up the inside, a closer third. Two back to runway model, and she's now six off the pace maker. Then it's Coda's second last, and Mill Lock at the back of the pack is nine lengths off the pace. Opening quarter, 24. Four flat out of the Churchill backside they wheel. Summerly Brian Hernandez gives her a breather out there. She's clear by two. Quiet optimism second in the gold and Pat Day put in some tight quarters up the inside third now. And three back to runway model racing fourth by five to Mill Locks and Coda's at the back of the pack with just over a half mile to go. The opening half time was 47 and two fifth seconds moving towards the far turn. Summerly leads it three parts of a length in front of Quiet Optimism racing second. Runway model has in the goal pinned down at the fence now a gap of five back to mill locks and coda back to the back of the pack around the far turn they go running for the quarter pole three across the track there goes runway model eddie martin makes his move to the outside pokes a nose in front summerly something left and kicking back along the inside quiet optimism third in the goal put to the whip and not responding at this point in the stretch drive runway model taking the lead summerly full bore and not going with her here comes in the gold starting to gear it up into third coda is up the inside, starting to roll down to the final furlong runway model. Eddie Martin Jr. is all over this one. Runway model, here comes Coda gobbling up the ground. Runway model by two. Coda can't get to her. Runway model wins the golden rod under Eddie Martin Jr. by two and a half. Coda's second, and Summerlee was third. Runway model, a filly who ran very, very well in Breeders' Cup competition, returns here just over the even money favorite, making a nice middle move inside uh, four wide on the turn to pick, pick up a three-length victory over Coda, who rallied well from off the pace. Summerlee, the early pace setter after a bobbled start, did end up weakening late but finished a solid third. Disappointing was in the gold, who was scratched from the Breeders' Cup juvenile fillies because of a little bit of a problem. She has returned here. She did show good speed, perhaps needed this one and may improve next out. The winner, Runway Model, a dark bay or brown two-year-old daughter of Patienville from Ticket to Houston by Houston, was bred in Kentucky by the Everest Stable, owned by Navid Chohan and trained by Bernie Flint, ridden a victory by Eddie Martin Jr., Runway Model covers the mile in his 16th and 145 and four. 
Next up, the final stakes race of the Churchill Downs season for this year. The Kentucky Jockey Club stakes a grade two for the two-year-old males going a mile and a sixteenth. Let's head back to Louisville in the running of the Kentucky Jockey Club. Off and running in the Kentucky Jockey Club. Storm Surge straight out to grab the early lead from Greater Good in second and High Grove up the inside third. And then BB Best is rushing up with Magna Graduate fanned wide around the opening turn. Into that clubhouse turn. High Grove and Eddie Martin taking it to the front running. Storm Surge now there's stride for stride. BB Best is right there. Three deep and third by three to Magna Graduate. A clear cut fourth. Then to the inside comes Rush Bay Racing Fifth. Social Probation moves on the outside three wide. Then Drum Major. Greater good next by seven more to Wild Desert. At the back of the pack. The opening quarter in a contested 23. And two fifth seconds and three across the track. They stack up now. BB Best is three wide on the outside of Storm Surge now. And High Grove can't keep pace early with the top pair. Drops back a bit at the rail. Gap of four back to Magna Graduate. Inching up on the front runners. And behind that rush bait on the inside of Social Probation now. Behind there comes Drum Major. Then it's three back to Greater Good. And Wild Desert at the back of the pack. Half mile and 47 seconds flat. Routing the far turn. BB Best in front by a length and a half. Storm Surge is racing in the second spot. Here comes Magna Graduate revving up powerfully to the outside. Social probation is following that one into stride as they round the turn to the top of the lane. Drum major fat out seven wide. They straighten away in the stretch dry. They turn for home. BB Best, but collared by Magna Graduate on the outside. BB Best digs in. Magna Graduate. Here comes Rush Bay up the inside rail. Is Greater Good gaining ground? Greater Good and Rush Bay going on by the in battle leaders. Greater Good hitting the front. Greater Good and Johnny McKee winning the Kentucky. Kentucky Jockey Club pulling off by two to Rush Bay, and it was Wild Dream. Wild Desert finished up third, and BB Best was fourth. Greater good, the winner a couple of races back of the Kentucky Cup Juvenile. Fourth last time out in the Iroquois rebounds with a very nice effort here from off the pace. Down the rail, a very nice trip under John McKee. Rush Bay put in a nice effort after having a little bit of traffic trouble at the top of the stretch to finish second. Wild Desert rallies from far back off the pace to finish third. Favored in the field was Storm Surge, who ran close to the pace early and did fade to finish sixth in the field of nine. The winner, Greater Good, is a two-year-old bay colt by Intadab from Gather the Clan by General Assembly. He was bred in Kentucky by uh, Lakin and Sons. He is owned by Lewis Lakin and trained by Bob Holthus. Ridden to victory by John McKee. Greater Good covers the mile in the 16th at Churchill in 1 minute 45 seconds flat. We're going to take a brief break right now, and when we return, we'll be heading out to California for this weekend's exciting racing, primarily on the turf from Hollywood Park. Please stay tuned. This year, many thoroughbreds, no longer able to compete, will join the ranks of racing's homeless. Since 1982, the Thoroughbred Retirement Foundation and its supporters have been providing help and hope for those in need. Creating opportunities where once there were none, the TRF, together with the racing industry, is meeting the challenge, taking care of their own. Yesterday's innovative concepts combining the TRF's rescue mission with educational and rehabilitation goals have become today's life-saving success stories and a track record of unsurpassed growth. Safely retired thoroughbreds are now enjoying second careers, bringing responsibility, healing, and purpose to the lives of those who need it most. With your help, we can continue our saving mission ensuring many more horses the welcome home they so richly deserve. Welcome back everyone to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with the Autumn Turf Festival from Hollywood Park. They put on a terrific show on the grass out at Hollywood. We're going to begin with two-year-old fillies in a split division of the Miesk. We'll begin with Division One, $100,000 for the two-year-old fillies going a mile. Let's head to Hollywood now on Friday's running of the first division of the Miesk. They're off. Lunar Flight broke very sharply and goes for the front. Lady Truffles and La Maitress away second and third. Cloture Clash is, breaks fourth. Then comes Kachina Dream and Crystal House, followed by Royal Copenhagen, and the early trailer is Louvain. 
Lady Truffles moves through to take over the lead at the club turn. So Lady Truffles will be the pace setter. She's a length and a quarter in front of Lunar Flight in second. La Maitress is a tugging and willing third. She's tucked in at the rail and less than two from the front. She's a length in front of Culture Clash in the red cap, three lengths off the lead. Kachina Dream is fifth with about five to come. She's a length in front of both Royal Copenhagen and Crystal House. And then it's three lengths back to the trailer. Louvain as they head up the backstretch and Culture Clash has been pulled up out of the race. Number four, Culture Clash was pulled up at the four and a half. There's a half mile left to run in the Miesk Stakes and Lady Truffles is confronted by Lunar Flight. Lady Truffles is a neck in front. Lunar Flight is second by a length and three quarters. La Maitress in striking position. Royal Copenhagen moves through inside of her and here's Royal Copenhagen up into third and less than two from the front. Kachina Dream is next. Louvain is closing in from the back of the pack for Dominguez. Louvain is within three and a half of the lead. Crystal House is the trailer and they head for home and Lunar Flight has taken over the lead. It is Lunar Flight. Now a length in front of Lady Truffles. Royal Copenhagen out for the drive and here she comes. La Maitress could also do it and so could Louvain. Any one of four in the final furlong. Louvain pokes her head in front. Royal Copenhagen between horses. La Maitress. It's Louvain in front. Royal Copenhagen and La Maitress chase her home. Louvain in front. Louvain one by two. Royal Copenhagen was second. La Maitress third. And Lunar Flight finished fourth. Louvain making her American debut, getting a uh, nice rider up from uh, the East Coast. Ramon Dominguez picking up the call here for trainer Bobby Frankel in this filly's U.S. debut, rallying from well off the pace after a slow start to draw clear by two over the favored Royal Copenhagen. La Maitresse finishing in the third spot. The top three spots all going to Phillies born overseas. The winner, Louvain, is a Bay two-year-old daughter of champion Sindar out of Flanders by Common Ground. The name Flanders may sound familiar to you. It is not the Flanders that we're familiar with here in the United States. This is an Irish-bred Flanders. Louvain was bred in Ireland by 12 Oaks Stud and is owned by Edmund Gann, trained by Bobby Frankel and ridden to victory by Ramon Dominguez. Louvain covers the mile on the turf at Hollywood in 1 minute 37 seconds flat. We're going to head back to California now for Division 2 of the Miesque once again, a grade $300,000 mile on the turf for the two-year-old Phillies. They're off. She Sings broke running, so did Witten inside and outside. Show the most speed. Wise Investor, Kenza, Patty's Daisy, and Conveyor's Angel all close up. Lady Lacane threw at the rail, and the early trailer is Mac Rhapsody. She Sings and Witten at the clubhouse turn. These two sprint away, and Witten is determined to get to the front. She pokes her neck in front. She Sings is going to concede the lead and take back second, so Witten about to clear off for Tyler Bays. She's a length and a half in front. She Sings is second by two lengths, with Lady Lacane now racing third. Wise Investor is mid pack. She's fourth at about four from the front. Conveyor's Angel has six lengths to make up. Patty's Daisy just outside of her. Then it's two and a half back to the two trailers. Mac Rhapsody and Kenza. They're midway on the backstretch in the Miesk and here she sings to re-engage with Witten. Now these two are once again even at the half mile pole. Witten's ahead in front. She sings alongside in second and now Witten's about to clear off again going into the far turn. She's a half length in front of she sings. Lady Lucane is in striking position. Conveyor's Angel moves up to fourth now and she's only three off the lead. Wise Investor. Patty's Daisy follows Conveyor's Angel. She's going well for Corey. Then it's three back to Mac Rhapsody and Kenza. Wide open at the top of the stretch. Witten's just in front. She's about to be confronted by Conveyor's Angel. Patty's Daisy continues to follow her. She sings, drops out of it. Lady Lucane is next, and Conveyor's Angel strikes to the lead. Conveyor's Angel to the final furlong. She'll have to hold off Patty's Daisy and these two. Come to the final 16th. Conveyor's Angel tough to get by. Patty's Daisy to the outside trying to gun her down down on the money it's going to be close conveyor's angel patty's daisy to the outside patty's daisy might have her conveyor's angel patty's daisy wins what a good stretch battle in the second division of the mies patty's daisy did it conveyor's angel second close for third between mac rhapsody and kenza Patty's Daisy making it three in a row. She won the Salem County and the Jessamine County. Here shipping to the West Coast for familiar East Coast trainer Todd Fletcher to pick up a game neck victory over Conveyor's Angel with Kenza back in the third spot. The winner, Patty's Daisy, is a chestnut two-year-old daughter of King of Kings from Miss Patty by Woodman. Bred by the Stonehaven Farm in Kentucky and owned by the breeder, trained by Todd Fletcher and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani, Patty's Daisy covers the flat mile on the turf in 136 and 4.
right back to Friday's card at Hollywood Park for the Hollywood Turf Express. Nice group of uh, sprinting turf horses running for grade three credentials, $150,000. Let's head back to California, the Hollywood Turf Express. They're off. De Valmont and Mighty Bo show speed. Whirlwind Romance is close up. Duranimo checked and checked hard and drops back to last. Ombre Rapido's on the move. Only the best is next. Then comes Coded Message and Cajun Beat, followed by Golden Arrow and the troubled Geronimo at the back of the pack. Ombre Rapido and De Valmont. De Valmont is just quicker and he's a neck in front. Ombre Rapido is back at the rail, but De Valmont's about to slingshot away and clear. De Valmont now a length and a half in front. Coded Message could get up into second. He's three off the lead. Mighty Bow has four and a half to come. It's three back to only the best. Cajun Beat is eight lengths off the front. Golden Arrow is next, then Geronimo and Whirlwind Romance, and the leader is DeValmont, and he's sharp off the top of the turn in the Hollywood Turf Express. DeValmont has opened up a four and a half length lead. Cajun Beat is in gear now. He's about to run up into second. Mighty Bow is third, but he'll have to make up three in the final 16th, and he must just might do it. Here comes the Breeders' Cup champ, Cajun Beat. Geronimo runs a giant race, but Cajun Beat takes charge and runs away. Cajun Beat, yes! Cajun beat one by three and a half. Geronimo, great second. Mighty Bow third. And Golden Arrow finished fourth. Cajun beat last year's Breeders' Cup sprint winner moving onto the turf and doing so with considerable ease here, getting the victory by three over Geronimo with Mighty Bow back in the third spot at 22 to one. The winner Cajun beat a dark bay or brown gelded four-year-old son of Grand Slam for Becky Shirt by Cure the Blues was bred in Kentucky by John T.L. Jones Jr. and H. Smoot Falgren. Owned by Padua Stable, Eric Kane and Eric Kane, and trained by Bobby Frankel. Coming off a disappointing try last time out, moving to the turf with considerable success. Picking up Ramon Dominguez, Cajun Beat covers the five and a half furlongs on the turf at Hollywood in 102 flat. We're going to head into Friday's card now, or out of Friday's, and into Saturday's card, rather, out in California, starting out with the grade one citation. Middle distance turf horses, let's head back to California, the running of the citation. They're off. Mingan missed the break two lengths. Loa de Sanamo and Buckland Manor show speed. Gondolieri and Segan third and fourth. Special ring could be wide early. Mingan splits horses after a sluggish beginning and goes all the way up to fourth. Mingan's on the move. Fairly ransom from off the pace today. Then comes A to the Z and nothing to lose. And the early trailer is the three-year-old. Three valleys as they bank to the backstretch. Buckland Manor and Gondolieri are one, two. And Buckland Manor leads by a tight length. Gondolieri is second, a similar margin. Loa de Sanamo well placed by John Court. He's tucked in at the rail third and less than two from the front. Mingan is all the way up to fourth and he is only two and a half lengths off the lead. Special ring hung out outside of him. Segan is in and amongst horses. He's at the rail with four lengths to make up. He's a half length in front of nothing to lose. Fairly Ransom, the gray, also has four and a half to come. Then comes A to the Z and Three Valleys is the trailer. There's a half mile left to run. In the 28th, Citation Handicap, Buckland Manor and Gondolieri. These two even in to the far turn. Buckland Manor's ahead in front. Gondolieri is second. Mingan is all the way up to third. Lawa de Senimo bides his time. He is at the rail. Special ring loses ground, but he's got momentum four deep. Then comes Segan. He's in behind horses. A to the Z. A big long shot moves up. Then comes nothing to lose. He needs a way through, and they head for home. It is still Buckland Manor. Lawa de Senimo is out to challenge. Here comes Lawa de Senimo. Mingan is next. A to the Z is running a monster race. And look at the Calbred. A to the Z moving through from the inside. Lawa de Senimo, three valleys from the back of the puck. Lawa de Senimo, A to the Z. Lawa de Senimo, A to the Z. Lawa de Senimo. Lawa de Senimo beat A to the Z in the citation handicap. Three valleys was third, and Mingan finished fourth. Lewa de Zanimo, he was brilliant earlier on this summer, was given some time off this fall, and here returns with a nice half a length victory over Longshot, A to the Z, who made a huge move from off the pace down inside and really was game down on the rail under Garrett Gomez, couldn't quite get by. Lewa de Zanimo, three valleys, rallied from well back off the pace to finish in third. The winner, Lewa de Zanimo, is a four-year-old chestnut son of candy stripes from December by Ahunora. He was bred in Brazil by the Aris Bago do Sul. He is owned by TNT Stud and trained by Bobby Frankel. Ridden to victory by John Court, Lewa de Zanimo covers the mile in a 16th in 141 and 1.
We're going to head right back out to California now in the running of the grade three generous two-year-old Colton Geldings running for $100,000. Let's head back out to California and the generous. They're at the post. They're off. Double O broke running and goes for the front. Little bit of zip and Vitruvian second and a third. Veiled speed, Generalist and Forzine are close up. Then comes Petrus. Lucky bid will be wide early. Chattahoochee War is next. Then comes at the back of the pack, Dr. Kananga and they head to the back stretch with Quiet Money mid-pack and Little Bit of Zip clears off to the backside and Double O will sit second now. Little Bit of Zip is two lengths in front. Double O is a tugging second. These two have opened up three and a half on Forzine who races in third, strung out over a lot of ground. They're going fast up front. Generalist and Petrus are fourth and fifth. They're 10 from the lead. Vitruvian and Quiet Money have 11 to come. Veiled Speed is 12 lengths from the front. Then comes to the outside and Lucky Bid, followed by Sunny Sky, and the trailer is Chattahoochee War. Far back to the Dr. Kananga as they go into the far turn, and Little Bit of Zip trying to win it right here and now, going into the far turn. Little Bit of Zip, aggressive at the three furlongs. He leads Double O by a solid four or four and a half lengths. Double O is after, asked to go after him now in second. Forzine's at the rail with Petrus just outside. To the outside, Sunny Sky makes a move at the quarter pole. He draws within five of the lead. Then comes Veiled Speed and Little Bit of Zip is running an ambitious race, but now Double O is starting to reel him in, and here comes Double O trying to gun down the line. Long shot. Little bit of zip is still there. Double O alongside. Now Sunny Sky draws within three of the leads, and Double O is trying to gun down Little bit of zip. And Sunny Sky is trying to get them both. Double O puts his head in front. Sunny Sky to the outside. Little bit of zip. It's Double O in front. Double O wins the 23rd generous three quarters of a length. Very close for second between Little bit of zip and Sunny Sky. Chattahoochee War finished fourth. Dublio, actually a lot of Eastern participation in this one, and Dublio gets the victory second last time out in the Bourbon County. Prior to that, he had a four-race win streak going, and here shows why he was dead game through the stretch, catching up with Little Bit of Zip, the early pace setter, who was very solid here, held on by a nose over sunny sky, but a nice effort here by Dublio. Yet another East Coast shipper picking up an important win on the turf in Southern California. Dobleo is a dark bay or brown two-year-old son of Southern Halo from Secret Red by Secretariat. He was bred in Kentucky by Anzac Limited. He is owned by uh, Scatorchio, Pletcher, and Wetterman, trained by Todd Pletcher, and ridden to victory by Corey Nakatani. Dobleo covers the mile of the Holly or at Hollywood in the Generous in 137 and 1. We're going to stay on that Hollywood turf course one for a couple of more races. Sunday's Matriarch next up. The grade one Matriarch for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. One of the most important fixtures on the California turf circuit. Let's head back to California, the running of the Matriarch. They're off. Hope Buzzard broke running and so did at 12 Montant. And there goes at 12 Montant to try to cross and clear. Hope Buzzard gonna try to deny her the fence. Keto Keto and Ocean Drive are third and fourth. Island Fashion and Intercontinental next. Then comes Denny Bola and Ticker Tape. And the early trailer is Musical Chimes. They race out the clubhouse turn. And the leader will be at 12 Montant, and she sets the pace just three quarters of a length, though, from Ho Buzzard, who angles into the two path. Keto Keto is close to the pace today. She's in the red cap, third and a length and a half from the front. Ocean Drive is in the four path. She's got about two and a half to come. Intercontinental and Denny Bola eyeball each other and the front runners two and a half lengths off the lead. Island Fashion is in the white blinker. She's got four to come. Ticker tape could need racing room leaving the back stretch. Musical Chimes bides her time at the back of the pack. There's a half mile to run in the 24th running of the Matriarch, and it's still at Trois Montant. She leads just by a neck as Longshot Ho Buzzard takes it to her, leaving the backstretch. Keto Keto in striking position, Intercontinental. And Denny Bola, now two and a half off the lead. Musical Chimes is passing horses. She's ranging up four wide. Ticker Tape found a seam between horses. Here's Ticker Tape in the pink. She's got a chance as well, and it's wide open as they head for home. Ho Buzzard and at Trois Montant. These two in even with a final furlong to run. Intercontinental and Ticker Tape. Musical Chimes still three from the front. Intercontinental. Takes over the lead. Ticker tape left back in second. At 12 Montant and Hope Buzzard. Intercontinental is clear to the wire. Intercontinental win. Intercontinental wins the 24th Matriarch about two lengths. Very close for second at 12 Montant and Ticker tape. Maybe Island Fashion for fourth. 
Intercontinental following her sisters Banks Hill and Heath Hayes in winning grade one stakes races. The matriarch now at a mile rather than a distance, a longer distance, but uh, a tremendous effort for Intercontinental. who had been a little disappointing over the summertime. She was given some freshening time by Bobby Frankel, who brought her back for this effort, and coming up with a strong two-length victory under Jerry Bailey, a 12 montant, her stablemate, the early pace setter, held on to second by a nose over ticker tape. The winner, Intercontinental, is a Bay four-year-old filly, a daughter of Dane Hill from Hasili by Chaosi, bred in Great Britain by Judmont Farm, owned by the breeder and trained by Bobby Frankel, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Intercontinental covers the mile in the matriarch in 135 and 4. One more stakes race to bring to you from Hollywood. That Sunday afternoon's running of the Grade 1 Hollywood Derby for three-year-old Colts and Geldings at a mile and a quarter on the turf. Let's head back to California, the Hollywood Derby. They're at the post. They're off. Timo is sent out for the front. Fight Club shows speed. Laura's lucky boy is into the bit. And Big Squeeze is quickest of those four. And Big Squeeze takes over the lead. Terraplane is between horses. Laura's lucky boy, three deep. Willie secures a good running position. Then comes on the acorn. Hendricks is at the rail with good reward between horses. Jawas Homfo and Imperialism are next. Fight Club is now third last. Black Dune has one horse speed. It's fast and furious as they head into the clubhouse turn and Big Squeeze will set the pace. It is Big Squeeze. Laura's lucky boy secures a good striking position from post 12 as he sits second, just a length in front of Willie who's tucked in at the rail third. Timo is in striking position. He's fourth and two and a half lengths off the lead. Fight Club is outside of Terraplane. Good reward is between horses and Hendricks at the rail and they're all five from the front as Laura's lucky boy makes a move for the front end and engages Big Squeeze to the back stretch. Joao Sanvo and Imperialism are six off the lead on the acorn just outside of those two. Fast and Furious and Black Dune are at the back of the 64th Hollywood Derby field, both 10 lengths off Laura's Lucky Boy, who has taken over the lead at the half mile marker. It is Laura's Lucky Boy aggressive into the far turn. Now three quarters of a length. Timo gonna come take him on. Willie splits horses and Big Squeeze is back at the rail in fourth. Then comes Terraplane. He runs a big one, four wide, less than two from the front. Joao Sanvo and Imperialism are next. Joao Sanvo checked and checked hard. It cost him two positions. Black Dune is still at the back of the pack. He is bottled up with nowhere to go. Black Dune gonna have to fly and he angles to the inside. Meanwhile, Laura's lucky boy is the leader. Fight Club runs a good one. Timo's alongside. Black Dune is trying to pick off horses, but he'll have to get through a ton of traffic and Laura's lucky boy comes to the final furlong fast and furious is on a roll black dune needs racing room and here comes fast and furious and good reward these two fast and furious good reward imperialism between horses good reward fast and furious good reward wins the 64th hollywood derby goes to jerry bailey a sweep of the weekend stakes good reward beat fast and furious imperialism was third Good reward, picking up a surprise victory here at 16 to 1. And uh, it surprised everyone, including the race caller, who didn't even catch his, uh, his move as he swept out from a, a between horses position under Jerry Bailey, gave him the perfect trip. He got clear and was able to hold off Fast and Furious, who rallied from far back off the pace. Imperialism, a horse that we remember from the Triple Crown Trail this year, switching over onto the turf recently, running a couple of good races, including this solid third place performance. Good reward did break his stakes maiden a couple of races back when he won the Stormcat, an ungraded stake in Kentucky. He has struggled a little bit with some of the East Coast's better three-year-old turfers, including the likes of Prince Arch and Artie Schiller, neither of whom showed up here. I'm wondering if their connections are questioning their decision to stay home after seeing Good Reward's victory. The winner, Good Reward, is a bay three-year-old son of Stormcat from the great heavenly prize by seeking the gold. Bred in Kentucky by the Phipps Stable and owned by Ogden Mills Phipps, trained by Shug McGahey, and ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Good reward. Covers the mile and a quarter in, on the turf at Hollywood in 201 and 2. We're going to pause now for a brief message, and when we return, we'll be heading to New York. Please stay with us. By supporting NTRA Charities and its affiliates, you help horses stay safe and healthy before, during, and after their racing careers. You help the people and the communities that are home to NTRA member tracks and farms. And you help Ronald McDonald House Charities worldwide. NTRA Charities, serving our community and yours.
Children and adults with disabilities are finding new freedom through horseback riding. For more information on programs and centers near you, contact NARA at 1-800-369-RIDE. Welcome back, everyone, to Horses and Courses. We're going to continue now with stakes racing action from the Big A. We're going to head back to Friday because Thursday's card was canceled after the second race. The fall highway was rescheduled, run on Sunday. We'll bring that to you in just a few moments. First up, Friday's running of the Delta Airlines Top Flight for three-year-olds and up fillies and mares. Let's head down to the Big A and the Delta Airlines Top Flight. And they're off. Rory Motion gets off to a good start. So, too, does Tempest Fugit. Tempest Fugit ought to be the leader. Rory Motion will sit back in the first furlong here. Daydreaming on the outside. Here comes the gray. Pop Princess up the rail. Farther back, Caught in the Rain is on hold in the first furlongs here in Bending Strings. Down the back stretch run now, and Pop Princess has made her way through on the inside of Tempest Fugit to grab a short lead, running a quarter in a tepid 23 and 4 fifths seconds. So the pace is fairly leisurely here with Pop Princess in front. Tempest Fugit alongside. Rory Motion not far behind. And Jerry Bailey sitting chilly with daydreaming. They're four lengths from the leaders. Bending strings to her inside. Caught in the rain still in hand as they hit the half mile pole. Pop Princess continues to vie with Tempest Fugit through a half in 46 and 4 fifths seconds. Rory Motion now gets a little nudge there from Johnny Velasquez. And Bailey asking a bit more from Daydreaming, too. Bending strings and caught in the rain now asks for run. Less than three furlongs to go. Pop Princess, Tempest Fugit. Here comes Rory Motion. Here comes Daydreaming. And Bending Streams looms large, just in behind the lead, and caught in the rain. They're off the turn and into the stretch, and they're sprinting as they come down to the final furlong. Rory Motion, Daydreaming, knocking heads to here as they come into the final furlong with a clear run coming from Bending Strings down the crown of the track. Daydreaming comes away with the lead. A late threat from Bending Strings. They're coming down to the finish. Daydreaming as Bending Strings surges. Here's the wire. It looked like daydreaming held on. It's a very tight photo with bending strings. Rory Motion third. Daydreaming. Now this is where you expect to see Shug McGahee in the winner's circle in New York. And daydreaming and Jerry Bailey wearing the familiar black silks of the Phipps family getting a nose victory over a game bending springs with her stable mate Rory Motion finishing well to finish third. The winner, Daydreaming, is a three-year-old Bay Philly, a daughter of AP and D from Get Lucky by Mr. Prospector, bred in Kentucky by Ogden Mills Phipps and owned by Mr. Phipps, trained by Shug McGahey, ridden to victory by Jerry Bailey. Daydreaming covers the mile at the Big A in one minute, 35 and one. We're gonna head into Saturday's stakes card now, beginning with a pair of juvenile races, beginning the Demoiselle, a grade two for three or two-year-old fillies, going for a $200,000 purse. Let's head down to New York in the running of the Demoiselle. And they're off. And Sis City breaks alertly and she's heading right to the lead. With Secrets Glory away second on the inside, winning season third. And the Blinkered Salute is up and on the pace today in between horses, running fourth. Money helps on the outside, followed closely by Katie's Shady Lady. And a break of three, back to Natalie Jane, trailing the field early on. Around the clubhouse turn, and it's Sis City. She's very keen on the lead. Salute not far behind. Salute's just a length behind Sis City, who gets through a quarter in 24 and two fifth seconds. With winning season, third on the outside. Secrets galore down toward the fence. Katie Shady Lady is fifth as her stablemate sets the pace. A break of three to money helps, and a break of another four back to Natalie Jane. Continuing their run down the back stretch, Sis City Salute. Continue. One, two with five furlongs to go. The quarter went in 24 and two fifth seconds. The half in 48 and one. Sis City still holds that one length lead. And Jerry Bailey has salute just glued to her right outside her at the half mile pole. Winning season third. Katie Shady Lady now being asked to pick it up. She's fourth on the inside. Secrets Galore is under a drive, but no response yet. Around the far turn. Sis City still holding on to that lead. Here comes Salute now, and she's making a move as they approach the top of the stretch. Winning season third. 
Katie Shady Lady, fourth to the inside, Secrets Galore. Natalie Jane comes through on the inside of Money Helps, and the field turns for home. Sis City Salute. They've been one, two all the way around the racetrack. And at the top of the stretch, it's still Sis City. Jerry Bailey asking Salute for everything she has, but she's fallen three lengths behind Sis City. Sis City opens up on Salute, winning season, and all the rest. And it's going to be a front-running victory for Sis City in the Demoiselle. She has won by four lengths at the finish, and it's a dead tight photo between winning season and salute. This city stretching out nicely. She did uh, disappear at the top of the after the top of the stretch in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies, but ran a game effort that day to hold on uh, to position late in the stretch. Uh, after setting the early pace here, she draws clear by three and three quarter lengths as the heavy odds on choice over Salute. Yet another uh, nice performance from a Phipps McGahee runner. Winning season sits a perfect trip, uh, showing good speed, just about three wide. Came up with a little bit of rally of a rally to finish third at 16 to 1. The winner, Sis City, is a bay two-year-old daughter of Slew City Slew from Smart Sis by Bo Genius. She was bred in Kentucky by the Highly Broad Racing Stable, now owned by Sanford Goldfarb, Joe Torrey, Michael Zub, and Ira Davis, trained by Richard Dutrow Jr. This was one of the most successful claims of the summer during the summer meeting here at Saratoga. Sis City under John Velasquez covers the mile in an eighth in 150 and 1. Two-year-old males on record next in the Remsen. A very exciting renewal of the Remsen for the uh, grade two two-year-olds. $200,000 stretch out distance of nine furlongs. Let's re return to Aqueduct and the Remsen. And they're off. Rockport Harbor immediately in front by a length. On the far outside, Galloping Grocer. Rockport Harbor got the jump on him right from the beginning. Galloping Grocer just off his flank, second. Pavo just in behind them, third. Killing all and Father Weast, followed by Stormy Jim. So it's Rockport Harbor to be the early pacemaker here. But Galloping Grocer's second on the outside. Pavo taken back in third position, and Killing all is fourth. Rockport Harbor through a quarter in 23 and four. Galloping Grocer not far behind. So they enter the back stretch run. Stuart Elliott trying to nurse that speed of Rockford Harbor. He's got a pretty good hold on him. He's doing it all by himself, out there by a length and a half. Galloping Grocer has settled beautifully for Johnny Velasquez. He's a tracking second. And then Pablo on the inside of Killinall. Five lengths back to Stormy Jim, who's lost some ground. And then a break of another three back to Father Weist. Rafael Bejarano trying to motivate him. So as they approach the half-mile pole, it's still Rockport Harbor and Galloping Grocer, 1-2. The pace is solid, a half in 47 and one-fifth seconds. Killing all is third, Pavo is fourth. Around the far turn, two undefeated two-year-olds. Around the far turn together, Rockport Harbor now a short lead. Galloping Grocer's right alongside, and the battle is joined here with three furlongs to go. Coming to the top of the stretch, Rockport Harbor, Galloping Grocer. Their strides synchronized as they come past the quarter pole. Opening up on the field by five. Killing all is third and Stormy Jim. They're off the turn into the stretch. Rockport Harbor is still under a hand ride by Stuart Elliott. Velasquez is all over Galloping Grocer. Rockport Harbor a narrow lead. Galloping Grocer on the outside. Nip and tuck as they come down to the finish. Head to head for three furlongs here. Rockport Harbor, Galloping Grocer. Two outstanding two-year-olds putting out an outstanding performance and it is Rockport Harbor to win. Rockport Harbor by a neck over Galloping Grocer in a great renewal of the Remsen. Well, people showed up to see Rockport Harbor and Galloping Grocer, the two unbeaten Colts, take on one another, and they got quite a show here. It was Rockport Harbor by a neck over Galloping Grocer, a long eight-plus lengths back to Killinall in the third place. Both of these horses, the top two finishers, heading into this race undefeated. The slight edge in the betting going to the New York bred, Galloping Grocer, but uh, it was Rockport Harbor and Stu Elliott for the John, John Service Barn getting a game victory on the front end. It was indicated following this race that Rockport Harbor did come out of this race with a bit of an injury apparently to his uh, to one of his heels and he will uh, will be getting a couple of stitches and a little bit of time off now as a reward for his very nice four for four juvenile season.
The winner, Rockport Harbor, is a gray or roan two-year-old son of unbridled song from Regal Miss Copeland by Copeland. Bred in Kentucky by High League Broad Racing and Taylor Made Farm, owned by Fox Hill Farm and trained by John Service, ridden to victory by Stu Elliott, Rockport Harbor covers the mile and an eighth in the Remsen in an extremely fast 148 and four. We're going to head right back down to the Big A now for some more extremely fast horses in the Grade 1 Cigar Mile, $350,000 flat mile. Let's head back to the Big A in the Cigar Mile. And they're off. During breaks well, Voodoo taken back. Badge of Silver and Purge and Pico Central down on the inside. Unforgettable Max in the early mix. Scramble on for the lead here. Pico Central up for a short lead now, but plenty of company with him. Purge is right there. Now he's got a lead. Badge of Silver pressing on the outside. Unforgettable Max right there for it. Two lengths back to During. The opening quarter in 22 and two fifth seconds. On the inside, Poacher Sunrise now moving up to be in fifth position. Voodoo is sixth on the outside, still very hard to handle, is Voodoo. And then it's during. Lyman Tamer is at the back of the pack. At the front of the pack, it's Pico Central. Purge continues to press. Badge of Silver continues to run with them on the outside. Through a half in 44 and one. A grueling pace here. And Pico Central has been pressed hard throughout as they round the far turn as a half length lead. Badge of Silver keeping that pressure up. Here comes Lion Tamer, who was last on the back stretch and is catapulting past horses on the far outside. Lion Tamer has made a huge move on the far turn here at Aqueduct and rolls up on the outside to engage. Pico Central and those two are head to head. Three sixteenths to go. And Lion Tamer has a narrow lead. Pico Central battling on gamely, but he grudgingly gives way. A neck behind Lion Tamer. Badge of Silver is third. They're coming down to the finish. And it's Lion Tamer and Pico Central. Badge of Silver third. It will be Lion Tamer from off the pace to win the cigar mile by length. It will be a photo for a second between Badge of Silver and Pico Central. The time was 133 and 2. Lion Tamer making a huge move from way off the pace. He was last up the back stretch. Uh, there was obviously a sharp pace up front. Jockey Hayes, Jose Santos registered that quickly. Made a huge move. This guy dragged him up into contention. Three wide at the top of the stretch. Drawing clear by a length and a quarter over Badge of Silver who snuck through between horses. Pico Central involved every step of the way as the odds on choice. Trying to earn himself a championship here. Fades to finish third. The winner, a Lion Tamer. A four-year-old chestnut son of Will's Way from Tippecanoe Creek by Olympia was bred in Kentucky by Paul Smith. Owned by Michael Tabor and trained by Todd Pletcher, ridden to victory by Jose Santos, Lion Tamer covers the mile of the big, at the Big A in 133-2. and two. We're going to head into Sunday now with a pair of stakes races, beginning with the ungraded Montauk. New York bred Philly is running for $75,000. Let's head down to the Big A in the running of the Montauk. And they're off. Serenity Smile. And there goes our tune on the far outside. And South Wing in between them. So they race for the first turn. And Serenity Smile hooks up with our tune. Those two shoulder to shoulder as they move into the turn. Two and a half lengths back. And South Wing is third behind this developing speed duel. And then it's Fate Accompli running along in fourth. Bundle of Roses is fifth by four. French Hideaway is sixth. Board eligible. The three to five favorite has only one horse beaten as they enter the back stretch. And that's my girl Natalie. And it's our two now, who shakes loose to lead by a length and a half. Serenity Smile runs second. The first quarter was pretty sharp there, 23 and 2 over the off going. South Wing is in the clear in third. A break of seven. Back to Fate Accompli fourth. And now, board eligible is making a move, moving up into fifth position. About seven or eight lengths from this good speed up front. The half goes in 47 seconds flat. Approaching the far turn now, and it's our tune. The lead is a length. South wing second on the outside. Serenity Smile is third. Board eligible is now fourth. Fait accompli under a ride in fifth. Three lengths back to Bundle of Roses, sixth. Another three to French Hideaway, a long way back to the trailer, My Girl Natalie. Around the far turn, three furlongs left here. Three quarters in 11 and three. South Wing coming up to engage our tune. And board eligible looms large just in behind the lead third as the field turns for home.
South Wing comes off the turn with the lead. Here comes Board Eligible now, who motors up on the outside. Our tune is now third toward the rail, and it's six lengths back to French Hideaway and Bundle of Roses. At the eighth pole, Board Eligible prevailing, opening up on the field. The lead's now three lengths. South Wing will try to hold second here as Bundle of Roses comes on through in between horses, French Hideaway on the outside. But Board Eligible gets the job done at odds on, one by four. South Wing clearly second best here and Bundle of Roses was third. Board Eligible, who was only beaten about a length and a half by males in the Empire Classic last time out, had taken on some grade one fillies and mares throughout the course of this season. Here romps by an easy five as the odds on choice over South Wing with Bundle of Roses rallying from well off the pace three wide to finish third. The winner, Board Eligible, is a black four-year-old daughter of Gold Miner's Gold from Double Boarded by Cormorant. She was bred in New York by Dr. Bernard Abramovici, owned by Radina Stable and trained by Jimmy Ferraro. Ridden to victory by Pablo Fragoso, Board Eligible covers the mile in an eighth and 151 flat. We've got one more stakes to bring to you. That, of course, the fall high weight. This was carded on Thursday, rescheduled to Sunday. It's a grade three sprint for the older horses, $100,000 the purse. Let's head back to New York one more time this weekend for the running of the fall high weight. And they're off. Primary suspect gets off to a very good beginning. There goes uh, Max's buddy who comes on through and Uncle Cammy down on the inside. Uncle Cammy now up to take the lead. With down six, now moving to second, Max's buddy is third. Friendly Allen fourth on the outside, Thunder Touch back to fifth. Medalist off last, now sixth. Primary suspect off to a very good start is dropping to the back of the pack with Papua on eavesdropper. Into the far turn, Uncle Cammy rattled off a quarter in 21 and two in the slop here. Uncle Cammy a sizzling pace. Here comes Friendly Island to the attack, three furlongs from the wire. Don Six is now back running in third. Here comes Medalist on the outside. Medalist is now fourth. Thunder Touch fifth in between horses. Max's buddy is tailed off. They're off the turn, they're into the stretch. Uncle Cammy trying to do it all the way on the lead. Got a half and 44 and one. He'll come to the eighth pole with a three length lead. Papua with the late run. On the outside, Thunder Touch kicking in late. Medalist is now sputtering. Eavesdrop on the far outside, gaining quickly on Uncle Cammy. And here is Thunder Touch to take the lead and win it. Thunder Touch wins by a length and three quarters. Papua finished second, close for third. Eavesdropper and Uncle Cammy. Thunder Touch picking up his first stakes victory here in a game length and a half effort over Papua with Eavesdropper running from far back off the pace at 33 to 1 to finish in the third spot. Favored in the field was Medalist back off of the layoff since this summer. Rather disappointing. He did not show good speed. He got off to a little bit of a sluggish start, made a little bit of a middle move before fading to finish fifth as the 2 to 1 choice. The winner, Thunder Touch, a chestnut three-year-old son of Gulch from Highland Vixen by Highland Ruckus, was bred in Kentucky by Adina Springs Farm, owned by the Stronach Stable and trained by Karen McLaughlin, ridden to victory by Raphael Bejarano, Karen McLaughlin and uh, Karen McLaughlin and Mike Hushin running one, two, three, four in this uh, in this fall high weight handicap. Thunder Touch covers the mile or the six furlongs rather in 109 and four. That's going to wrap up a busy edition of Horses and Courses. Thank you very much for joining us this week. We hope you'll be able to join us again next time. Until then, I'm Jean Wood. Have a great week at the races.